Good morning. Woo! How we doing? Woo! It's a handsome group. <laughs> Thank you. Do something like O H. Oh! That works. Wow. How did you know that? Too? You got to read the local paper, pal. <laughs> well, the whole reading thing. This is. <laughs> I have a I have a friend at home that's uh, uh she's a, a a native Ohioan, and so that was the one thing she said. Well, listen, if I can give you one tip. It's just yell out O H. Oh, oh, oh. It's funny that there was only 25% of you from Ohio and 100% of you. <laughs> uh, how you doing, brother? I'm good, man. Yeah? Yeah. You? Well, I, I, I will say that uh, this, this guy is currently working, unlike a lot of others here. Well, someone's <laughs> about to go to work. Oh, that's true. <laughs> but he, uh, what time do you finish up like 4 30 a.m friday night 4 30 a.m and then to get to the airport took me two hours came straight here it's and then i get to do it all again to not tonight to, to get to start tomorrow like what i gotta get up like a 4 30 wake up i gotta be there at like six thank you thank you oh, wait. oh it ain't all sunglasses and red carpets is it <laughs> No, no, I mean, uh, close. They make uh, work. We should talk about your new show. Should we? Yeah. I don't know anything about it. Well, we know Amazon. Yeah. Which is awesome. Yeah. Uh, we know that you're a badass in it. Well, I don't, I think mean, that's All to be I seen. Know. I'll try. <laughs> it's written as such. Right. Whether I, whether I pull that off is. Uh, I have no doubt. Uh, yeah, it's uh, well, congratulations. Uh, thank you, man. Yeah, I'm excited about it. It's uh, uh, something. Uh, thank you. Uh, I think it's got a, a really good team. Derek Oz is the, uh, the writer creator of it. He's uh, uh, from the from the Dick Wolf family. Yeah, I saw that. they're all the Chicago shows. Chicago They're not Fox, very successful TV. at all. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, uh, so this is this is exciting for him too because he's kind of. Uh, and I was saying in my meet and greet yesterday, Kripke was a network guy for, yeah. for many years, Supernatural, and look Timeless at Revolution, and then he got the Amazon gig, and it was like, Kripke... Spread the wings. Yeah, <laughs> Kripke at large. <laughs> and so uh, so I feel like Derek's got a, a, a bit of that happening to him, where he's like, all right, the, the network gloves are I off. I can say and do whatever. That's I it. Want. We yeah, get crazy. Yeah, it's, it's um, exciting. So, yeah, I'm excited about that. And, uh, We've got season four of The Boys dropping. Uh, Will we see you in season four of The Boys? I can't tell you that. Yeah. That's a yes. I know we'll see you. <laughs> yeah, but every day at work, you're like, is Jason coming? <laughs> <laughs> That's the whole crew, by the way. <laughs> Everything's a secret. Uh, it's great seeing you, Jeff, but where's Jensen? Yeah. <laughs> Is in my suitcase. <laughs> I have him. I travel there. Soldier boy. <laughs> it's like a transformer. <laughs> um, Just a cod piece person. <laughs> I told that story. I'm like literally a, I had to fly to LA when we were getting uh, Soldier Boy, you know, put together. And uh, and those those suits are like they're like pieces of, of art. Like they're they're works of art. He's, he's this uh, uh, LJ, who's the super suit designer. Uh, That's a job. <laughs> yes, that is a job. And a lucrative one. Um, she, you know, I had to fly out to LA like six different times for the fittings because they're making it to my body. And, and I forget which time, it was maybe the, the second or third time, he ended up just randomly texting me. And I was like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm actually at, a, at my Soldier Boy fitting right now in LA. And he's like, how big's the cod piece? <laughs> I need a picture! <laughs> and I was like, hold on, I, I believe I got a picture. 
<laughs> oh my god. Oh uh, yeah, that's uh, you know, it's the little it's the little things or the big things. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait! Oh my gosh. Alright, we should probably get some questions here before uh, uh, let's go right here in the front row. Uh, you in the beautiful dress. Uh, no, she's waiting for the mic. Here we go. We got you. She, <laughs> oh, wait. Wait for the mic. So we can all hear. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so I wrote this one down. Uh, so John is one of my favorite characters in the show. Um, and even though he died pretty early on in the series, I always felt like the ghost of John Winchester was kind of one of the most influential um, things in the show. Um, and my biggest what if is what would have happened if John had stuck around long enough to see his son grow up. So I'm curious to know what you think, how Dean would have developed if he had come into his own man while his father was still alive. And then Jeff, how John would have changed if he had seen his son grow up and kind of become more independent of his influence and his Direction. You're asking a real question. <laughs> <laughs> Starting off with a banger. You see, we're up here talking about cod beach. <laughs> Boom! Sorry, it came to me in the shower yesterday. <laughs> so did the cod beach. <laughs> I can tell you one thing if John uh, had stuck around as, uh, as the series progressed, uh, Sam would have been in the back seat. Well, who would have been driving? <laughs> yeah. I didn't mean would you have, Would you have let Dean drive, or would, or would John be like, listen? Yeah, I mean, are we talking son. about Jeff or John? Yeah, I know. John, <laughs> no, man. Uh, shotgun. Uh, you can write shotgun. Yeah, shotgun. That's and, by uh, the way, the first thing music. I thought of was the car. In this question, I'm like thinking the car. I know. Immediately. Just immediately. <laughs> I know you want to go deeper. <laughs> Uh, I, I feel like, honestly, I feel like it would have taken on a little bit of the uh, life imitating art in the fact that, uh, you know, Jeff and, and Jared and myself get along probably more like brothers than like, you know, father-son dynamic. And I, I think as, as we would have gotten older, John probably would have taken less of a of a father figure yeah. role and been more of a brother in arms. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It been more I feel like, because, you know, still have Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> right, Bobby would have been like, Listen, there. Uncle Bobby would have told you to shut up. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to let you be your own man. But that's my John at Winchester, by the way. <laughs> that's dead on. <laughs> Candy. Bobby. Um, yeah, I don't, I, I, I don't think it would have been uh, a... A separate dynamic. I think the dynamic kind of would have blended and been more of a unifying situation. Um, but it would have been cool to see maybe some of those father moments come out as the brothers were battling with whatever they were dealing with. Uh, it would have it would have been nice. But I think I think for the most part, like what Bobby represented was what the boys needed at that point. And then we saw like as they got older and more established in that world that Bobby became more of a you know, a, a, a friend and, a, and a, a, an adversary, or not adversary, but a, a, an ally to them. I think John would have been in a similar situation. Yeah, I mean, you guys are, you know, adults. Uh, you were adults. Uh, right. Rather quickly. Uh, <laughs> but also, I think John missed so much of that early life that I don't know that he knows how to be overly fatherly. Uh, so I, I think that transition into being more friends and, and uh, kind of accomplices, it would have been, it, it would have, that's more of the natural progression. I, I don't think it would have been too baddish. Which would have been fun as hell to play, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it would have, you know, we would have had a blast. <laughs> Damn it, Grace. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Your choice. Crazy one. Yeah, this one, she's like, Ooh. yes. You had the most enthusiastic way. I don't need it. I don't need it. <laughs>
The paper from the cloud? Yeah. The TV show The Cloud. Oh, 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 oh The Cloud. You know what? I had a buddy of mine uh, who's no longer with us, but he he uh, he called me one day and he's like, "Dude, remake McCloud." So y'all had the same idea. Yeah. <laughs> Were you around for McCloud? I, no, I don't think I was around. Yeah, uh, but it was the '70s. Yeah, um, cool. That's it. There's there's a lot of those kind of like '70s '80s shows and characters and stuff that are getting kicked around right now. I, I actually just had a meeting. Uh, a week or two ago about an old uh, 80s series that uh, people are talking about bringing. Whoa. Bring it, I'll tell you later. <laughs> um, oh, no, but, uh, said you what's that? Oh, no. That I'm not in shape? <laughs> Coming from Misha, that's right. <laughs> Look, I am a shape. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he is shape and to be seen. <laughs> nice shape. <laughs> uh, yes, right there. That's you. Yep. Why is Misha talking about your shape? Because Misha talks shit, man. He's just that's Misha. Yeah. Taking that as aggression. He let <laughs> Jensen let himself go. <laughs> But said not to tell me. Listen, I know I love myself. Go, it's fine. I, I was wondering if you could describe your first convention compared to now. How you... My very first convention yeah. was Las Vegas with you. That's right. Uh, and it was the first convention I'd ever done, and it was overwhelming. Uh, that was it. But that was massive. That was a big, yeah, the Vegas ones were awesome. Yeah, yeah. It was massive, but I, I loved it. Uh, and it just kind of, you know, look, I think the opportunity to come and meet y'all, because we would be standing up here if it weren't for y'all liking the stuff that we do, and being fans, and that, I, think it's, I think it's really important that we're able to do and, and we love it, being able to interact and meet you and talk to you. Uh, it, it's awesome, and, and I, I think the opportunity to do that is is pretty special. Uh, and it reminds us of what we're doing, you know? Yeah. Because we do get I, lost at work, and it's I not red said, carpet. I think he said to me at the Vegas one after we went out, with the, you know, did the big the big room with the, the, the full crowd. I think he, he came to Jared and I, and you're like, what have you guys done? <laughs> what, what have you created here? Yeah, I'm like, I, I don't know. I had no idea. Um, the first, I mean, my first kind of con experience with Supernatural was a, it was in the UK. And uh, uh, it was like, a, a, there were multiple shows kind of represented at that, actors from different shows. And uh, it's actually the first time Justin Hartley and I did a, did a con together. Um, but uh, I remember thinking, well, it was like the first year, the show had only been on for one season. And uh, these other shows, you know, it's like Angel and Buffy and Smallville and like, so they were represented. I was like, well, they're going to get much more of a crowd reaction than our little show that just started. And I remember it being like just the opposite. Like, Surprise. it was huge. And then that's when it shifted and they were like, oh, we'll just do a supernatural one out off of the fan reaction. And so that's kind of what what launched it from, from at, at that point. And I, I just remember being like, well, these are kind of cool. We could, we could do these a, a couple of years before they start getting tired of us. You know, maybe laugh, maybe get a couple of years of, the, of these shows. And, and here we are, almost 20 years later. Still talking about a show we all love. My social media feed is all pictures of Jensen. <laughs> And I'm like, where is he now? And it's like, I, yeah, it's still going. It's crazy. So thank you guys, because you, yeah. you guys have, have kept this not only alive, but it's, it's grown into something that I think we're all proud of. So. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> it's a hard one to ignore right there. Subtle. <laughs> Idget. Her shirt says Idget. Yes, it does. <laughs> Um, hi, my name's Tess. Nice to meet you guys uh, again. 
Um, I, uh, first off, Jeffrey, um, my best friend, uh, watched you in Grey's Anatomy. She was a late bloomer in Grey's. And literally six hours later, she had to watch you beat the crap out of Glenn. Uh, so it was like a 180. Flip it. <laughs> so she was not okay for about 48 hours. <laughs> and uh, Jensen, I have a question for you. Looking right. Can you do the Scooby Doo line? Where you do like Scooby Doo? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Well, at the end, where you go Scooby Doo? -doo? It's not even new yet. You're asking me to perform. Okay, fine. Uh, how does it, uh, I gotta hear it. Okay. Dance, monkey! Dance! It's going to be a little sad, but it's also uplifting for me. Um, I wanted to share with you, I've been watching since season one, episode one. And it took me 13 years to get my mom to finally watch the show with me. So she was binging it, and then sadly she was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. And she was desperately trying to get to the end of the show before she got too sick. Sadly, she got really sick towards the end. Um, last five episodes of the show or so, she wasn't able to focus on the TV to watch. So I would describe the show to her every day. And we got through to the end and I explained everything and we talked it out. And then we thought she had longer than she did, but it turned out to be the last night that I was with her. And I you know, leaned over at the hospital and I kissed her goodnight and I told her I love her. And this sounds stranger than fiction, but she said I love you. And her actual last words were, I'll tell Dean hello. And that has actually been kind of a comfort to me. Uh, it was in 2020, and so you brought my family together in a way that I didn't, I didn't think I could be closer to my mama, but you all helped bring us even closer together at the end. Well, that's, um... First off, so sorry, because that's, uh, that is never, never a, a, an easy thing to go through. Um, but that, it, it does, like you said, there, there is some, some beautiful aspect to that story. And, and, and it's one of the things I think we get to, we get to really lean on is, uh, you know, I've, and I've told this story many times, but um, where the show really started taking, a, a finding its, its audience, really, you know, landing on its feet, um, there's a saying in the industry, when things get maybe a little too over dramatic on set and people get a little too serious and tempers are flaring and personalities are clashing, um, it's been around since I've started the industry. It's like, hey, hey come on, we're not curing cancer here. And I think that's probably a, a saying that you know gets used in a lot of industries, but certainly on set when things get a little too like, we're just like, come on, we're making a movie here, we're not curing cancer. But the more times that I got to spend with you guys and I got I got to hear stories like this, we're not hearing cancer, but what we might be doing is giving somebody just a little bit of a of an inspiration to, to fight or giving somebody a distraction from the pain. Comfort. Or comfort. And that that really fueled, I think, myself and the rest of the cast and even the crew uh, when we would hear stories like that. And, you know, we're not we're not doctors, we're not doing you know, doing God's work, but we are we're doing something that means something to someone. And so thank you for sharing that story and um that's good. Yeah. Thank you. Good luck beating that one. <laughs>
Yeah, go ahead. I'll, we'll repeat it. Oh, here we go. We got something. <laughs> I, I didn't get that from the Jeff. <laughs> Jeff. Jeffrey, look at me. Uh, hi, I'm Lindsay I'm from Canada. Peace girls. Um, my question is, um, and I asked this to Sam, but in the three hundred episode, when <laughs> Dean and Sam went to get groceries, what do you think Mary and John did? And also, <laughs> why? <laughs> Why, when your dad is about to go back to the past, would you do the dishes? <laughs> or if you left. <laughs> what? What? What are we talking about? <laughs> uh, we're talking about Lebanon, correct? Yes, Lebanon. For someone that's super loud, I didn't hear any of that. I didn't hear any of that. I, I heard go grocery shopping. I that's heard, all. That's I it. heard what you and Mary did while they went grocery shopping. That <laughs> <laughs> uh, was the first question. Okay. The second well, question. You know is, what they did. What on earth? <laughs> They got ready for groceries. <laughs> <laughs> um, why would the boys the do the dishes when their dad is about to leave? I mean, dishes can wait. I think that was about being uh, in an uncomfortable position. And you know, if you're ever in an uncomfortable and don't know what to say, you busy yourself. Never. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, not you. But <laughs> in general, you know, I got that. I thought that was a nice little catch by the writers. Right? Yeah. Hey, yeah. Give them something busy to do. It distracts from what, what they're having to face and deal with. Yeah. That's it? That's it? That was... Boom! Alright. Um... Oh, wait. Okay, let's... Uh, Alright, all the way to the end, front row. Yeah. I love the shot. What?! He looks like a Winchester. Hi. Hi. My question is for Jensen. Uh, when you were training for Soldier Boy, I heard a lot about your diet. Could you explain to me your diet? I'm trying to get that nice look you got going on. <laughs> <laughs> that out of shape look I have going on right now. But if you can't, if you see pretty, my lovely sister here would love you to say the line, I'm Batman. <laughs> Scooby Doo, now it's yeah. Batman. You start asking me to do stuff I'm not even a part of. Uh, uh, it was, it, it wasn't overly like a stringent diet I, I did. It was more of just working out as much as I could, uh, and, and... Growing beards. Yeah. yeah growing beards. You sent me, like, uh, like, videos of, like, running naked in the snow and shit. <laughs> you Listen, were gonna, yeah, yeah, yeah. What we do. That's when I was like, well, he's in shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it, I mean, this was, this was during, you know, like, prime lockdown COVID time, so there was, there was no, like, gyms open, it was... Uh, and so everything I, I, I did, I, I just did at home. I, I got myself a, a small weight set. Um, you know those power blocks that are like adjustable, yeah, like yeah. dumbbell things? That's all they I have. They, yeah. they, they just sit. They yeah. <laughs> they got clothes yeah, on. They're really dusty. Right, right. <laughs> uh, and, I, and I started like finding workouts online and, and then just kind of created my own little uh, you know, routine. That Did you I, change your diet? You like um, I, I, I definitely like increased, you know, protein intake, and, but it wasn't, again, I wasn't like doing anything overly specific. I, I was just trying to bulk up a bit, so. You um, got freaking huge. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's amazing when you start like pushing weight around what that, what your body does, it, it reacted. Um, I tell you what, I was glad to be done with that. And then of course, <laughs> Do an interview with with Ant with Anthony Starr, who plays Homelander, and I was like, yeah, I got all bulked up. He's like, you know, you could have just added muscles to the yeah. suit. And I was <laughs> like, shut your mouth, <laughs> Mr. Oh. Homelander. Yeah, um, suits are amazing. Suits right? are great. But uh, but the problem was is that when I when I mentioned that <laughs> to LJ, who was uh, building the Soldier Boy suit, I was like, you you could have like add some like you know. Like, come on, we've all seen, like, the Ben Affleck Batman suit. Yeah, like, that ain't him. Yeah, he's a man, some, you know, shoulders, arms. A bigger cut piece, perhaps. I <laughs> was good with mine. Uh, and she just, she literally just goes, you're going to bring me some muscles in April. <laughs> that was it. I, nobody told me, Kripke didn't say anything about it. Nobody yeah. said anything. And, but I, it was her that said that. And I was like, Damn. challenge accepted. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, so yeah, I just, I, a lot of protein shakes and a lot of moving weight. That's all I do. Yeah. You've got your instructions. <laughs> Go get them. <laughs> all right, I think we got time for one last one. You pick. Yeah. I, I, that was kind of right between <laughs> 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 uh, Yeah, you. <laughs> uh, thank you guys. Um, first convention, could not be happier. I think I was literally shaking my boots when I took a picture of Denson, so so happy. <laughs> I was too. I still do that myself. <laughs> um, well, anyway, so my question is for both of you, because I've watched you guys in a lot of roles. Of course, Dean Winchester is my absolute favorite, but... Um, I watched Soldier Boy like in The Boys, even though The Boys was so hard to watch. As soon as Jensen was announced, <laughs> as soon as Jensen was announced, I'm like, crap, I have to watch this now. I told um, my mom, I'm like, you're going to want to skip this one, mom. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one I watched like seven times. Yeah. I was like, oh, I didn't see that the first time. I don't want to. I'm going to watch it again. <laughs> but even Jeff is Megan and the role he's been in The Watchmen, like, I've seen you guys in great, like, great fun, and, you know, dramatic roles, and now in these really creepy, dark roles. I guess I'm just curious of how you guys get in the mindset to make such drastic character changes and do so well with what you do. Go ahead, because I'm actually interested in hearing what, where, uh, where you found Negan. <laughs> well, uh, for me, it has to start on the page. I think if it's on the page, and uh, Negan in particular, you know, I had a comic book to go off of, which was super cool. You probably had that with Soldier Boy, too. Okay. And it does some indication for you. Uh, it does a lot of the work for you. Um, it's kind of, it's, I, I like to say it's just what we fucking do. It's kind of our job. Um, but I shouldn't say that because it's probably a little trickier um, than that. Uh, but if it's on the page, if, there, if it's written down and the writer has a good idea, uh, for me, that's where it all starts, and it'll also die there, you know, and it has. Um, John was on the page. Um, John got more interesting when I wasn't on the show. <laughs> right? <laughs> we talked about a lot. Yeah, I mean, shit that I didn't know. As a matter of fact, the first convention I did, I found out all sorts of stuff about John. <laughs> Well, people have some, have some heavy opinions about John. Big opinions. And you did not know that. You were like, wait, what? what? Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm in a fight with like 5,000 people. And like, we're like brawling. I'm like, that's not John. <laughs> Y'all don't know. And it, it's like a thing. And it still is occasionally. Um, but it really has to start on the page. And that's why we're lucky to have the Kripkes and you know the, the writers that we have. The Kirkmans and Gimbals. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's... there's I, I would say, because I've never had any formal acting training. I don't think you have either, right? And it clearly shows. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's why I can't talk about it. I'm like, I don't fucking know. There's no techniques. Go do it. I just do it. <laughs> uh, I, so I think with that, and I, I, I spoke a little bit about this, the, the meet and greet yesterday, um, in that, so not having formal techniques that I can rely on, a, 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 you know, a bag of tricks that I, that I got at the school for, for acting, uh, I have to kind of rely on my own experience or my own observations. And so a lot of, um, a lot of what I'll bring to a character is either a part of my personality that I just expand upon, or it's inspired by somebody that I know, a friend or a character in a movie that I once saw, and then I'll kind of blend all that together and try to find what the, what the writer's given me. I do, I'll, I will give you this one, Soldier Boy, I asked Kripke, I was like, you want me to read the comic stuff and use that as inspiration? He said, no. Oh. Because um, Soulja Boy was did quite, you know? quite different. I never did. Because I, I still don't want to change my idea of who this guy is. I have kind of an idea of who he is in my mind. And one of the, one of, I, there, were, there were many, but I'd say one of the kind of inspirations I used was uh, old interviews of Lee Marvin. And... Uh -huh. That kind of, yeah, that kind of mentality and that kind of speech and the way he kind of like, not, old not school, his, not his, man yeah, shit. not his roles per se, but literally him as, as an actor, like I've watched these old interviews that he gave and it was just, there was a, there was an air about him that kind of, I used as, as a bit of my, you know, my compass for Soldier Boy and, and those kinds of characters, old school, you know, uh, Sean Connery and, 
And I either then got to say, in the, I'm gonna slap you like, you're, like I'm Connery. And, and it, was, it was those things that I think Phil and Kripke were like, yes, that's, that's a good direction, go that route. So um, I just try to use what's available to me. Thank yeah. you. Thank I you. Know, I don't love Soldier Boy. I'm just thinking about it now. I'm like, yeah, he's old. <laughs> you did some real, it was some fun stuff. I love what you did. Uh, all right, guys, thank you so much. We're thank you all.